This Pioneer Field Agronomist, Scott Everskard, with the week of June 11th agronomy update. From a wheat harvest standpoint, things have pretty well gotten underway this weekend, starting here a little bit more on Monday, and expect uh, this week to really get well into the crop, and hopefully harvest won't last very long. Usually 7 to 10 days, we pretty well get to crop out. As we look back at uh, kind of the year we grew the wheat crop in, a couple things really stand out. We've seen quite a bit of lodging over the past few weeks um, as some of the heavier storms have come through and brought some wind and driving rains. Really, and, and two things really allowed us to see more lodging this year than maybe what we've seen in the past. I think the first thing is, is really, which is a good thing, is the lack of those heavy, heavy spring rains. The last couple of years, we've received those three, four, six, seven inch rains right after a lot of our nitrogen applications to wheat. Therefore, we had some pretty significant nitrogen losses in wheat. We didn't really have those this year. Instead, what we had was half inch, six tenths, one inch rains, which really uh, set the wheat crop up for maximum uh, uptake of nitrogen. So if you think about those two things alone and, and the, really the wheat plant's inability to regulate itself on how much nitrogen it takes up, it really had a lot of luxury consumption. Now we always talk about our goal is to really maximize that relationship between nitrogen yield and wheat because they are high, highly correlated as we can see that in head size. In lodged areas, the head size will typically be bigger than non-lodged areas. So we want to continue to, to make sure we're trying to maximize and hit that apex on the curve where we get 90 to 95 percent standability while maximizing our nitrogen rate. And th for the 2017-2018 crop, I think we're still going to see test weight being an issue. This driven all by the high temperatures in May. Really what we ended up with was a grain fill period in our wheat crop that was about half as long as it should have been. Um, so that extremely tight period and extremely high temps we had in May really shortened and really put the damper on our, uh, especially the test weights coming out of this wheat crop. So if you get a chance, uh, harvest this wheat crop as soon as you possibly can. Uh, try not to get that re-wetting effect back in the field. From a corn standpoint, a lot of the corn now starting to grow off pretty well. Um, from a corn nitrogen standpoint, one thing to think about as you're maybe thinking about some later applications of nitrogen, really V10 is the probably the last growth stage we want to have most of our nitrogen applied by that stage. Even though we know a corn plant's going to use upwards close to 40% after tasseling, we still want to make sure we have it on and applied by V10 to get it available to the plant down in the solar solution and really get the uptake through the roots. Would also be coming at us pretty quick as this corn crop continues to put on, you know, one and a half to two leaves a week is our corn fungicide applications and really targeting that VT to R2 timeframe. And really that's a fairly wide window, but really what we're looking for there is to kind of watch the diseases, see how the diseases progress, if they come in and kind of kind of massage that timing based on those growth stages of when we think the disease is going to try and take over. As always, if you have any questions, uh, please contact your local Pioneer rep. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.